<laughs> wow. Gosh, wow. Thanks, Erin. And blimey, that's such lovely words. Thank you. Um, I've got to say, when the email came in accepting Marine Drive, I was blown away. I mean, I love Broken Sleep and what Broken Sleep does. It's just amazing. So I'm just so glad that it's found a home with you. And it's been a delightful process working with you. And the cover is proof of that because you just took on board everything that I kind of said and it just looks ace, thank you. Um, so my thanks also need to be extended to Andrea Mason and to Nicholas Royal, who, um, who read the manuscript and still provided fabulous cover quotes for it. So, um, so thanks to them. Um, thanks also to um, David Gaffney for his um, continued support and encouragement. Mm -hmm. Um, I started out as a flash fiction writer um, and David was one of my inspirations and um, yeah, so that's nice. And the book's dedicated to Sue and Clive, who are my mum and dad, um, and so special thanks to them for their um, ongoing support. They've like, supported my um, literature career, as it were, by coming to events that I've run and things like that. Oh, and yeah, you know, paying for a master's in creative writing and things. So anyway, so thanks to them. So Marine Drive is a collection of fictions and flash fictions to do with water. Um, I used to be a sailor, um, which makes me sound posh, but I'm not. <laughs> I had this really tiny boat and I took her across the Irish Sea and then across the channel and through France and around the Med a little bit. Um, and some of these stories are inspired by the boat. So thanks to Hedju, that's the name of the boat. I don't have her anymore. But um, so I'm, what I'm going to read is from the beginning of Marine Drive and from the end of Marine Drive. And the beginning, we have four sort of flash fictions and they build up um, word countage wise from 50 to 200 and the final piece counts down anyway you'll see points of interest one dove stones we make for the concrete corner post plug hole whizzing across the water backwash fizzing breeze whispered a fresh song off the gritstone top Controlled havoc created without warning, we haul in and tack back towards shore. On the pier waving, trees, sails, flags, hands. It is time and they are waiting. Two, Puff Keris. We took to sitting on the pavilion roof that summer. We looked after the dog to start with because he had a tendency to nip our ankles later because of the view, as well as having the ideal vantage point to see the bowling green and shout down the winner of each end. We had a clear sight up the straits and out to sea. On warm nights, once the game was over and the players had packed away their woods, we'd count the starboard boys casting their emerald glow over the left-hand side of the waters. I'm still counting. Three, Sen. We didn't repeat what was said in the bar black with graffiti and rock posters and candle smut. It made us reckless the stolen bottles of beer, the shoes swinging on the wire, the running from alarms, the paranoia about shadows, the weed in the river. We lay on our backs, heads over the quayside, throats exposed to see who gave into their stomach first. We walked the planks of barges moored with creaking lines to heavy steel rings that poison hands with the stink of old coins. We played sentry go on Pont Neuf, charging a toll to cross, a poem, a dance, a song, a sword fight. We chatted the darkness into submission, never mentioning the thing hanging over us. Then, as the pooled glass of the highest left bank windows coloured orange, we caught the first metro home and got on with the rest of our lives. For the Downs. 
We packed away the remaining fine bone china, strapping it into the scuffed wicker basket. The black bird became insistent, its clamour piercing the scorched evening air. Tail feathers flicked high, wings hanging beside its flanks, shirt sleeves on an untidy clothesline. Distress call, better late than never. What was it you soothed me with then? Not to worry, it's only a cup. It wasn't a full set to start with. It was once, I sighed. We'd picked up the hamper on our travels, fashioning the occasion around the purchase, inviting our friends to join us on the heath beneath the water tower, coaxing them out of the safety of their homes and into the unwavering heat. It'll be fun, we said, a proper picnic, like in the good old days. We'll have red salmon sandwiches and cucumber with no crusts and homemade lemon drizzle and fizz out of flutes. We will sit on a tartan blanket. The ties are looser now, though there was always something missing. This just proved it, the smashing of brittle porcelain on baked ground, the breaking of the silence. Friends come and enemies go. There's always a stock needed sign in the charity shop window. So this is the final piece in the book. Um, in between there are various lengths of stories, some sort of longish short stories and some flash fictions. And um, because I've always written flash fiction, I'm quite obsessed with word count. Uh, I used to be a sub editor on um, like glossy magazines like Elle and stuff. And so word counts are a bit of an obsession of mine. <laughs> um, so this one goes from 200 down to zero. It's called Let's Go Round Again. And it's um, kind of something to do with Alice in Wonderland, kind of. And each section has sort of similar things, but obviously gets smaller. Let's go round again. One, two hundred. The canal's, canal's tinge is grey suds and the level is too high, but these things are not our concern. Come out from the overhanging canopy, still dripping the remnants of a shower into the lapping water, and creamy chippings glare, the sky the bright but dark blue of high summer. A storm has come and gone, not even a black smudge at the edge of memory. Our location is undisclosed, while the lush, deciduous woodland gives way to something harder, more concrete, pavements, roads, walls, houses perhaps, workshops maybe. A child's moon peers down, yet the sun is everywhere, and everything is painted as if to blind or at least to stun. The man on the train spoke French or Spanish. Either way, a language dripping warmth and confidences. As we perched on high stools at the counter of the dining car, he leant in and whispered to his colleagues to pass their cups, which he filled from a tall silver coffee pot, the liquid turning to blood red wine on contact with the fine bone china. He smiled at us, teeth as gleaming as his uniform, hands above his head, gently fluttered as the battery fizzled out around one, two, 150. When we awoke some hours later and descended the steps to the stones beside the railway at the top of a steep bank leading down to a dense copse of trees and a forest floor that released heat from the moss around our ankles and a recollection of psalms some Sunday long forgotten, we realised that we were at a loss to explain how or why we were there. My watch appeared to have stopped at two, whenever that was. Our sneezes disturbed the dormant undergrowth, and first a rabbit appeared, then a game bird, the likes of which we had never seen, a ptarmigan, a capercaillie, who knows? The rabbit rubbed its eyes in the white light, and the bird yawned and stretched. Then both rustled away from us, towards roofs reflecting the silvered surface of an overfilled channel of water, sides slopping 
as if a vessel had recently passed. Three, one hundred. Standing, sentry, a heron, one weary bead surveying our approach, the other reflecting the starlight up high. At those very same heavens opened, and the leaves of the ancient oaks and rowans and birch and beech reached tipping point and drizzled their moisture onto us and the truffling wild beasts. A cat appearing, then disappearing, pointed to the source of a desire line, traipsing from the trees to the makings of a town, or rather a village, with rattlings from the other side, indicating the disturbance of sleepers. A church chimed three, petering out before we reached the path's culmination. Four, fifty. The saltpetre flare of the whitewashed brickwork made it impossible to look at, impassable at this time of day or night. A clock struck four, carriages trundled along, a boat puttered, we sought shelter beneath trees from a sudden downpour. Without the correct codes, we would need to come back. Five, zero. Thank you, thanks for listening, um, and I hope you enjoy Marine Drive.